Hey everyone, my name is Bogdan Bujda and in this video I'm going to continue where we left off by adding a unit test stage in our YAML pipeline. The first thing I'm going to do is to add the unit test project. So uh, let me just add a solution folder called test and here I'm going to add the project. It will be a UX unit uh, test project. Okay, so uh, we have this, it will be in a .NET 6 project. Now let's uh, run this. And we see that the test passes. Uh, the next step would be to push this to our pipeline. So let me just create a commit here. Added unit test project. I'm pushing this to our uh, DevOps repo, and if you're going to look, take a look here, we see that the build uh, is starting, but we only have the build and the deploy stage. So let's go ahead and uh, edit this pipeline. Okay, we're going to add a new stage. Let me just copy. this part because it will be the same uh, I'm just going to say the stage will be called test it will contain a collection of jobs the job will be called test okay and then uh, this job will have a collection of steps the first step will be a .NET Core CLI command so I'm going to open this let me make sure that the cursor is here so uh, we have a list of commands here. I'm going to choose the test one. For path to projects, I'm going to put this. So uh, it will match every csproj file that has a test in its name, either lowercase or uppercase. I don't need any arguments, and I think this is enough. Okay, uh, and I think I have to remove this okay so now if i'm going to save this now say add the unit test stage you'll see that my unit tests will run i don't need to run it uh, because it will uh, run by itself each time i add a commit to the main branch so if we're going to take a look here, we see that we have the build stage, which is running now. After this, it will run the test stage and then the deployment stage. Okay, this one is almost done. Now it will run the unit tests. Okay, and as you can see, the unit is fast. I'm going to open here the step that we created, and you can see here that we have one unit test that passed, and uh, you can see that it found the right DLL. So it's to do this tab that unit tests that DLL. Now I'm going to go back to our project. I'm going to create a service that we want to to test, and we'll also see what coverage our unit tests have. So uh, I'll just go here to the to do this Blazor app, create a new folder called services. This is just for demo. Uh, in the next videos, we'll uh, create some uh, real services. But now let's just do something quick. Uh, task fetcher. Let's say that we have a service that fetches task, uh, fetches tasks from Todoist. Uh, sorry, public async.
Yeah, whatever. We just need something that turns number. Um, actually, let's make it return int directly. Of course, when you have a real case scenario, it should be a sync because you're usually making a, a REST API request. But let's leave it like that. And here, uh, this unit test, I will uh, change its name. So it will be task fetcher unit test. This is not my naming that uh, I usually use, but uh, let's just leave it like that. Um, so let's say get number of tasks should return zero. And now I'm going to create a new instance of task fetcher with resharper i'm just going to add a reference easily so uh, if you don't know what resharper is it's a really nice tool that can make your life really easy uh, especially when you're refactoring in this case i just added the reference uh, directly uh, instead of going to dependencies clicking add projects references and selecting this one so i have an instance of task fetcher then i'm going to call get number of tasks Okay, and I'm, I'm going to assert equals uh, zero number of tasks. Let's run this test. And we see that it's successful. Now I'm going to publish. Uh, actually, there's one more thing that we need to do, but first let's create this commit. So we'll just say edit task fetch church service with unit tests okay and another thing that I have to do in order to calculate the coverage for the unit tests is to add a new git package it's called uh, coverlet.msbuild this one I have to add it to my unit test project Okay, and now I will just commit this change as well. And I'm going to push this. Let's also pull the latest changes. Now, uh, I pushed this, but it doesn't mean that uh, it will calculate the code coverage. For this, we still have to do some changes to our uh, pipeline. So I'm going to go back to our pipeline. I'll just let this run. I'm going to click edit. And uh, we have to do some changes to the task for running unit test. First of all, we have to, it would be nice to publish test results. Okay, because we want to see them in our pipeline run. Uh, but also we have to add some arguments. Okay, so uh, first of all, Let's put the configuration. Uh, this is release. Yeah, we have this variable here. Just need to add the parentheses here. Okay. And then we also need to add this uh, parameter. Collect coverage equals true. And then this one, coverlet output format equals cobertura. That's it for this task, uh, but we'll need to add uh, one more. It will be a publish code coverage results task. This one here. Uh, the code coverage tool will be cobertura. And the summary file location will be this one because the coverage is published as an XML file. Of course, this can be changed. Now that we have this in place, let's just save. Okay, and uh, we'll go to our pipeline. We'll see what happens. You see that the last 
uh, one is still running. Uh, I haven't showed you here that the tests pass, so you can see this in your pipeline run. And you see this link to set up code coverage with some uh, tips on uh, Microsoft Docs. But we're going to see what happens when our latest pipeline uh, is finished. Okay, so right now it's doing the build. Already we can see that uh, the build artifact was published. Now it's running the unit test. You should see here that one unit test is passing. Total of one test files match the pattern. Let's go back. And so you see that one unit test passed and then it's calculating the coverage result, which will be in uh, an XML file, as I mentioned earlier. And then we also see that we have a line coverage of 0.12% and method coverage 2.56%, branch coverage 0%. Which is uh, pretty normal because we have only one unit test that doesn't really test much. The next task will publish the code coverage results. So let's go back to our pipeline. Okay, and here we see that we have uh, two uh, two artifacts: the build artifact and then the code coverage one. So if we open uh, an HTML, for example. We have this information here, so it's one assembly, uh, it found 20 classes, 21 files, It we only cover one line of code, and we see that we have a 0.1% line coverage, it's one line of code covered from uh, 775 lines of code. And also if you look here, you see the files that were analyzed and uh, the one the task fetcher you can see here that it has a 100 percent uh, code coverage that's it so if you go back here i think the pipeline is finished yeah and uh, you can see the unit tests that passed 100 percent because every, uh, all of them pass and here you can see the coverage which is 0 0.13 percent that's it for today. In the next uh, video, I will add the static code analysis. So make sure you subscribe and uh, or follow me on Twitter when I'll announce uh, when the video is published. Thank you for watching.